Good morning, everyone. This is Mark Soderberg with ADM Investor Services with your early morning grain outlook for Tuesday, October the 3rd. Being this is a Tuesday, if you hang around to the end of this roughly four minute video, I'll share with you not one, but two different trade ideas that we think represent uh, some pretty good opportunities and risk reward here in the marketplace. So we'll call it a two for Tuesday. Uh, futures here overnight, mostly lower, uh, except for wheat in Chicago, which is currently up about three to five cents. Uh, bean complex is softer, largely due to improved crop conditions. Yesterday, funds were some pretty healthy buyers across the board, with the exception of meal, where they sold about 3,000 contracts. A uh, lot of trade information out after the close. Corn used for ethanol came in at 443 million bushels. Uh, at the low end of expectations, brought uh, old crop uh, usage to 5.179 billion bushels for ethanol production. That is uh, uh, another 15 million below the USDA estimate in September. Uh, so we calculate feed usage uh, and residual and exports will need to be adjusted up another 92 million uh, to fit with the USDA stocks figure. Uh, corn cr uh, soybean crush in August came in at 169 million bushels, weaker than expected. Uh, 2.218, uh, excuse me, 2.212 billion bushels, down eight from the uh, last USDA forecast is where we calculate uh, soybean crush at. Crop conditions did hold steady in corn, 53% good to excellent, uh, up 2% in soybeans to 52%. Uh, that is why we think that the uh, softness here in the soy complex here overnight. Uh, most corn yield forecasts seem to be coming in about 170 to 176 uh, versus USDA at 174.5 in September. Uh, we are uh, soybeans ranging from about 49 to 50 and a half versus USDA's 50.1 in September. Our model are le is leaning towards a high end for both of these crops. However, I think that's largely due to high pod count and uh, ear population data from the last USDA report. I'm suspect that those won't quite hold in there quite as high. So we're going to be probably dropping those a little bit. We'll have our official estimates out at the end of the week. The Ukraine's Ag Ministry up there. Uh, grain and soybean uh, harvest here due to uh, better than expected yield results in the early going. Uh, planting progress in Brazil, off to a good start, just over 5%. Uh, however, better rains are needed across west, west central areas of the country to promote early growth and germination. Uh, as we've been talking about here in the bean oil in recent weeks, uh, usage for biofuel production just continues to uh, be off the charts, record high levels the last three months. And I I think the USDA is way underestimating the amount of bean oil used in uh, biofuel production. So we like bull call spreads here. Uh, the January options expire December 22nd. I like the Jan 58 cent call. Uh, buying that and selling a 64 cent call. You can execute that at about 160, about a cost of $960, objective of 550, uh, or $3,300. So if you want to take on more risk, I think you could also sell a 50 cent put against it. Uh, that could bring your net cost down to zero. Uh, however, that does bring on considerable more risk. Uh, and will need to be margined as well. And then we uh, just, I just think we're overdone to the downside here of the production estimates last week. Uh, we're above expectations, but stocks, uh, were, were just barely above expectations. So I think that's why we're seeing a little bit of a rebound here in Chicago. I think you can still buy it here under 570, a risk of 640, risk about 15 cents from point of entry with your stop. U.S. wheat's becoming more competitive in the global marketplace. Uh, and there's several countries, I think, that are at risk of lower production here moving forward. So I look for a nice short covering rally in wheat here over the next uh, 8 to 10 weeks. Thank you for listening, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day.